can't just vibe to that music. I'm just sitting here like <laughs> chilling out. Just, <laughs> get, just chilling mom. out. Good evening, Kyber K family. How are you? I saw Mr. Hello, Burger in there. Yeah. Hi, Mr. Burger. Hi, Say Wong. A distance nerding here to party. <laughs> oh, Say Wong says it's always Phil's fault. So hi, Mr. Oreo. Hi, Cam. Uh, yes, we're late. We're gonna just we'll blame Phil this time, you know. Give, give yeah. Phil a break from all of the blame. That's um, right. Good evening. We hope you're all well. Uh, how are you this evening, Mr. Excala? I, I I am good. I am um I'm I'm tired. I had a long week. I went to Fresno yesterday. Mm -hmm. I got to meet the uh the group um um Once Upon a Wish, the Once Upon a Wish Foundation. So that was very cool. Yeah. Um yeah, and uh we did there was a little fundraiser for them out at TGI Fridays, and uh, I got to I got to see well, a replica of the DeLorean from Back to the Future. That I was saw super pictures. Cool. Yes. I saw the pictures. That's amazing. Um, <laughs> I was busy because as I was telling uh I was telling Ark a little bit about this before coming on. Uh I had a choir concert last night and I do a lot for the concert. Um, uh, yes, a sexy shirt that Ark Scala has on. <laughs> um Ooh. I don't have a distance nerding merch yet. I need to get some. Um, so, uh, I had a concert and I, I designed, hi, Brian. Um, I designed the programs. I printed them and folded them all. I printed out lyrics and stapled a bunch of them. Uh, I ordered stuff for like coffee and seat and all this kind of different stuff. And we had to get that set up. And then I had to, I took care of the online ticket orders and, and all that jazz. And so like getting everything ready. And then I sang a solo last minute. So how, <laughs> all of how that, was that together, the solo was how fine. Was I, Okay, I know I've sung here on stream. It's one thing when you're singing and you're in front of a computer versus in front of a huge group of people. Right. And I know this might surprise people. Streaming, I've done for you know years now, um, and I'm comfortable with it. Singing, which I've done even longer, I don't sing by myself in front of people a lot, and I get <laughs> stage fright when it happens. And my heart will race, my <laughs> breath will quicken, and then my throat goes dry and I can't sing and my breath breathing control is just totally out of it. So my uh -huh. focus, I just need more experience. And so I was very thankful that my friend who's the director let me sing last night. I did one verse of Oh Holy Night and it went fine. It wasn't like amazing. It wasn't my best, but I'm just glad I did it because even while the person before me is going and singing their song, I'm sitting here thinking, I mean, we didn't find the program because we weren't sure. I could just back out, but I didn't. I did it. Right. Ooh, did it feel so, good? Do you feel accomplished? It, it, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> um. So okay. So guys, what is our first segment that we have on the show? News. Our nerdy news. And so the first story for your nerdy news is weird but true. Star Wars will highlight strange galactic facts i apologize i copy and pasted it from the article so they have it spelled <laughs> wrong facts not facts and trivia <laughs> um so if you guys want to check out this is actually really interesting like to talk about um where they made darth vader's breathing voice a uh, breathing sound from and such um so if you want to check that out that's actually being posted in the chat if you're watching this in the upload just check out the description below and you'll see the links to our nerdy news articles um, but I found I kind of the article lets you see a few pages so uh -huh. you can kind of see what you're getting into. But I found it really interesting. Um, they also talk about like early concepts of Yoda and stuff like that. Um, nice. so I, thought that I thought that was kind of cool and interesting. And That's the next thing. On, yeah. <laughs> uh, next on your nerdy news. Marvel's Blade game and development from Bethesda Softworks and Arcane Line. There is uh, a link in the description. We watched the trailer. My husband and I watched the trailer for it. And we discussed a little bit about it on Saturday Morning Nerd Out yesterday. Tune, those, tune in to those on Saturdays at 10 a.m. Pacific. Yes. Um, that is our nerd show. Where we talk about, like, we expand on nerd news and, like, discuss our reviews on things. And um, it looks really good. It looks, like, fun. And yeah. I can't wait for it to come out. I, I We'll see how it is. Bethesda's doing it with Arcane Lion. And we'll see how that goes. Um, but I'm kind of excited. I'm not sure if I'll get a chance to play it myself, but I'm excited to watch others play it probably. <laughs> um, anyway, so that is your 
your nerdy news. I'll post the link to that one in just a second as well. Um, but yeah, to, turn it, uh, take a look at those. Those are lots of fun. Um, both of those stories just kind of like grab my attention. Woo-hoo. That is your nerdy news for today. Nerd news. And I want to see, I know we picked up a couple of people. We are at 1565. So yeah. five more. So we need 35 more people, my friends. 35 share, share, share. more people. And I want to let everybody know, um, I, I'm going to start doing this on Saber Rattles, just so you know, Mez. But um, this uh, episode is brought to you by Kyber Cave. Make sure to check out our website. Tonight is the last night. Although we're having a problem with the code. So if you're trying to get in tonight, give us a call tomorrow and we will honor your 20% off. Um, but tonight is the last night for 20% off of anything in the website. Like I said, the, the code isn't working tonight. But if you call us between 2 and 7 tomorrow, we will get that taken care of and you'll get the 20% Hello, off. Hello, Mr. Kevin Hogan. Hello, Kevin Hogan. So uh, kybercave.com and make sure to check out KCP Merch dot com too oh, for all kinds of cool stuff from this channel right here yeah and guess guess who's designed all the merch mostly Woo-hoo. Uh, <laughs> the, the retro alcove the retro alcove logo was made by graveyard that is the one thing you will definitely see from him. yes i was uh, just wearing that shirt yesterday kcp merchandise yes they won get yourself some all right so next on our list guys james kaiser is our producer for flow of the show and every week he brings us every week that we have the show uh he brings us a flow that is really cool and this one is on a massive stage and it looked really interesting so i threw in a little edits here and there to get a little closer to the stage but um i found the whole because the whole stage is kind of used in parts of the performance so i found it really interesting so without further ado please enjoy our flow of the show what's up Duran? Emmett Keenick. Hi, Duran. Okay, guys, enjoy for the show. Thank you, James Kaiser. Wasn't that cool? Wow, that was amazing. I think that's the first time we've seen it in front of a big audience like that. Yeah, Holy that crap, was that audience was, a was huge. huge. Audience. Yeah, and I like, loved how really cool. he had like other lights on stage that like yeah, and they were correspond- synced. Oh yeah, yeah, that was such that was a really good performance. Well, well produced. So well thank done, you so well much, Kamikinig, uh, for letting us use that. Um, well, it's time. 
you want to introduce our wonderful guest? It's that magical time. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we have another exciting guest. This person has been to our show before, but I wanted to talk to him tonight because of his recent trip and his recent travels and a particular photo I'm very, very jealous of in particular. Um, this gentleman, uh, ever since Kyber Cave started, he is probably one of the first people uh, that we got to meet. Um, and this is our sister broadcast station in Sacramento. They do a great podcast called Distance Learning that you can find on any of your social media platforms. Wherever you nerd out, they are nerding out there, hanging out there, waiting for you. So with no further ado, please give it up for Mr. Young Phil of Distance Nerding. Are you good, Mike? <laughs> uh, no, okay, yeah. No, I'm over here talking, and just nobody <laughs> hears me. Just, I'm saying you guys made me look so much more badass than I actually am. It's great. It's fine. Well, dude, you, know, you are usually, badass. You are usually, badass. Stop it. <laughs> usually, I'm the one that's making everybody else look badass, and it's like, oh, well, hey, you guys just made me look dope. Okay, I'm with it, man. Say How Wong. Doing, James is dead, Say Wong. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, poor James. I'm good, man. No, uh, James has been on leave for the last couple of weeks on uh, on distance nerding. Uh, mm. Some uh, some things going on uh, family wise. So uh, that's just kind of been the joke in our chat for like the last uh, uh, couple of weeks is that I, F Philippe finally went nuts and killed James. <laughs> He's dead. <laughs> and then James shows up in chat and they're like, no, it's just Phil talking for James in the chat. <laughs> All right. So, my friend, you have been here before. I'm sure many yes, people sir. in our audience know who you are already. But for those that don't, um, and before we get in, we have a lot to talk about this weekend. You had an exciting weekend, my friend, and I'm I'm excited to talk to you about it. Before we get into all that, why don't you let people know a little bit about who you are, what it is you do? Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, I am your boy, Young Phil, Distance Nerding Podcast. Uh, we are a podcast that uh, we advocate for everybody's nerddoms. We're all about making, uh, normalizing everyone's nerddoms. We we want to do all of the fun nerd stuff without all of the toxicity. We, uh, we are very anti-gatekeeper. We don't like gatekeepers around on our show. We don't like uh, people who... Uh, we'll, we'll make fun of your nerddoms or your fandoms and the things you love. Uh, our whole thing is about nerding together. Uh, and we're also trying to change the concept of the word nerding, right? You know, the idea of right now, everybody says that, you know, if you're a nerd, that automatically means, you know, Star Wars or, you know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, pop culture and things like that. But the way we look at it is nerding is a verb. Right. Uh, being a nerd just basically means that you have a passion for something. Right. Uh, right. Say Wong has gotten into this argument with me more than once. Right. But like, <laughs> uh, you know, where he'll say, oh, well, you know, I'm the anti nerd. I'm not a nerd. I, I, I like sports. And it's like, OK, if you know sports statistics, you're right. a sports nerd. Right. Uh, we had a conversation. <laughs> it's true. We, we we had a conversation with a guy that uh he he's really trying to like say oh I'm I'm you know I'm not a nerd nerds not nerds all the like you know the bad trying to make nerds look bad. And I told him well what what's something that you enjoy? What's something that you do when you're not uh you know hanging out at dinners with us and stuff like that, right? And he goes right. uh, he goes you know well. I don't watch any of that nerd stuff. I was like, no, but what's something you like? He goes, guns. And that's it. That's did you try to <laughs> he's trying to go straight face? And I was like, okay, so you know about SOP mods, you know about uh, upper receivers, lower receivers, you know about different types of triggers and things like that. And he's like, oh, well, yes, you're a gun nerd. And he got so upset with that. I was right. like, you're a gun nerd, man. Like you're you you nerd out about guns. You have a passion for it. So I mean, you can nerd out on sports. You can nerd out on anything. The idea behind nerding to us is that you you are passionate about something and you <laughs> enjoy your passions. You know, and and we want to advocate for that. We want to say that if it's something that 
other people don't understand, like uh, uh, fringe fandoms. Um, I mean, some of the stuff's not even fringe anymore. But like you know, again, like um, you know, furry culture, or you uh, you like you like My Little Pony. You're a brony, you know, things like that. Like, there's nothing right. wrong with enjoying the things you like, and right. we want to advocate for liking the things you like like if you want to tell us why it's cool to like what you like we want to advocate for that so that's that's kind of the idea behind distance nerding that's what we kind of exist around and then that's you, what we're you doing. know i will say i think this is one of the the few things that gen z and gen a got right mm -hmm. is that we're coming into a time period where it's becoming more and more acceptable to just be who you are right if you're the type of person that likes to wear a cat tail while you're walking down the street just do it. Put a cat tail on and head to the mall. Exactly. <laughs> you know, again, it's it's like it, whatever you like, you should not be ostracized for enjoying the things you like. You know what I mean? Right. right. And then on the other, on the opposite spectrum, again, like you know, the, the lately we've been trying to combat uh, um, gatekeeping more because because we don't feel like that's not how you grow fandoms. You know, right. to say that you are not allowed to like something because you didn't like it from the beginning or, you know, we don't like you because you don't like this and all this other stuff. Like, no, it, star Wars again is, is the example we use all the time. You have a lot right. of people that say, well, that's not my star Wars and you're not allowed to like this because it's not star Wars and all this. Well, no, people are allowed to enjoy the things they want to enjoy. If you, if you like the sequels, but everybody else hates the sequels, enjoy what you enjoy. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like it, it's, we we don't have at the at this point where where the canon is what it is we can't change what the canon is so at that point learn to like it find a way to find a way to enjoy it. i i did that with the sequels you know what i mean right. so let me ask you with, with with you guys when you say you were a podcast i feel like that's just such a like a loose definition like you guys <laughs> i mean that it almost seems like a word you throw in there because you don't know what other word to put in there i mean you you do so much more than just podcast on the radio you go out to live events right. i know you, um you would uh what is that the uh, pub the brewing place in sacramento you guys used to do events at uh um, which we want to start doing again that's um uh jackrabbit brewery uh we, we were ju they, they just did an event with sack geeks out there yesterday Right. And then uh, I know you guys used to rent out movie theaters and do premiere nights or different movies. So God, you guys like are so much idea. more than just, you know, yeah. two guys uh, uh, with a couple of uh, headphones on talking on the, on the air. How do you describe this as nerdy? Um, our whole thing is we we outside of being a podcast, we want to be a community, you know. So, again, just just kind of being a community that supports each other and supports everyone around us. Cause that's, that's, that's the main thing that we want to do is, and, and, and we want to do more than just say, you know, uh, you know, we want a community, like we want to be a part of it. You know, we want to be right. active in the community that we're trying to create and be a part of. We're trying to make a, essentially start a bigger movement around us than just, you know, being a bunch of nerds that like nerdy things, you know, right. it's, 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 you know, trying to be a inclusive society of people who enjoy pop culture. Um, as far right. as like the definition of what we are, I mean, we are primarily a podcast. So it's like, you know, we, we, we evolved to start doing live shows when we started doing, uh, uh live episodes on tuesdays but that still does become an audio podcast right. uh and same thing where now with comic-con radio which is a uh, something we've partnered with uh whenever we do live interviews uh you know interviewing celebrities or guests and things like that we convert that to comic conversations uh which is on comic-con radio so i mean like you know we do a lot of that um yeah i guess we could be considered a vidcast metal uh you know, like because we do do a lot more video, uh, you know, a lot more content. You know, we try to try to uh, appeal to social media and things like that. But I mean, you know, for the most part, it's um, the, the way that me and James have started this. And, you know, we have like a lot of people that have gone between Kyber Cave and with us now and everything like that. Um, the day we stop having fun is the day we stop doing everything that we do, you know, and and. That's really the main thing is that we we want to continue to have fun doing what we do, but enjoy it with everyone else around us. Right. Yeah, it's funny. You were talking about community, and I was kind of reminded about that yesterday. I was at an event in Fresno with um, um, 
Wish Upon a Star Project, Project Wish. Yeah, Project, Project Wish Upon a Star. Wish. And they had they had come up to me and they were like, they had asked me, they're like, hey, how long has Kyber Cave been around? Um, because they said they, they had remembered hearing about Kyber Cave in the hardly heroes days. Yep. And I was like, oh wow. I was like, that's that's <laughs> going back. So it's very interesting how we can have these communities and you know, they're an organization that I've heard about many times through you yeah. and through other groups, but we've just never run into each other. Um, and then, you know, um, um, uh, you know, we have all the same friends and different associations. So yeah, it really is kind of a tight knit community. Yeah. 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 Uh, we, and, and the, here's the transition into what we're, we, what, why, why I came to talk on here, but, uh, that's, that's mainly what we did last weekend is we were with project wish upon a star, promoting them at la comic-con wow so when you say promoting them what exactly now i did see i was watching um i was watching youtube and i saw a video uh that you had put out with C uh, geek, geek saga. saga yeah um and it looked like you guys were at a booth and there was like people walking by the booth yeah, uh, yeah. but then there was other scenes where you, you were walking around and well not you but um yeah, the yeah. other people from uh, David. Geek saga yeah they were walking around talking to artists and things like that but uh, tell us a little bit more about that. So Geek Saga, we we linked them up with Project Wish just mainly because Project Wish is based out of Fresno. Uh, David, one of the uh, co-hosts of the Geek Saga podcast, uh, they um, he lives in Fresno, and mm -hmm. so we were like, hey, maybe we can link them together, and they can actually like you know link up and do things together and whatnot, just because they're closer, right? You know, I mean, it's uh, we always want to try and find ways that we can support Project Wish in the best way that we can, right? And uh, and so we linked them up and, um, you know, they've had such a good relationship that what ended up happening was they asked Project Wish, hey, can we set up a live podcast booth at your at your guys's booth? And they're like, yeah, by all means. So they they went all out. They set up cameras. They set up uh, uh, mic stations. They, they set up a whole booth there. Uh, and right. we, we started doing a, uh, a live podcast on Saturday. Um, and that uh, that ended up not working out the way we planned it to because the generator generator ended up dying. Oh. Uh, so yeah, so the, uh, it ended up converting to them walking around the con floor with their phone and uh, um, and and interviewing people on the fly. But yeah, no, right. I mean you know that's that's a lot of the fun stuff. When I say support them, uh, you know we were out in the middle of the uh, of the aisleway just trying to sell raffle tickets and promote Project Wish. We're always, anytime that we try to meet celebrities while we're there, we always try to get them to come and sign Star the Cow. Um, Project Wish has roots with um, with Stan Lee. So, oh, wow. yeah, Project Wish started uh, as an organization that Stan Lee started, uh, like, like started with. Uh, and every year up until he died, um, Stan Lee would sign at their booth. Wow. Uh, and it's a charity. Uh, the charity is designed to uh, support terminally ill children, you know, usually children that have, uh, you know, anything ranging from like, you know, types of cancers to different types of ter uh, terminal illnesses. Um, and uh, it, it's it's designed to give them the con experience. Right. So, you know, hey, these kids want to go to a con and meet a celebrity. Well, let's make them a custom cosplay and let's uh, do an entire thing around them. And like, you know, the idea is to make them the king or queen of the day. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, it's it's always a fun experience with them. And they um, they, they do so much. Uh, Darren and V are are, are, are people who are very deserving of admiration for, for the amount of work that they do to try and take care of the community and take care of people. Uh, I'm going to actually post here in the chat. Um, if, uh, if anybody out there wants to donate to project wish upon a star, simple enough, that's it right there. PWUAS.org. Thank you. Uh, yeah. And, um, and go and check them out. They're actually a really good organization. Uh, they're always there trying to help, everybody they can star the cow is kind of like the mascot that they have uh -huh. um it's uh it's got all kinds of signatures from like every celebrity you can think of wow so when you went down to la con this weekend were you going in support of uh geek saga or were you just going and ran into them and started helping them out uh so whenever we go to la comic-con we go as press 
Mm-hmm. So uh, we've this, this is your this second is, or third year, right? Our, our third year. So this yeah. is our third year going to LA Comic Con. Uh, we've got a great relationship with uh, with their PR team and everybody there. Uh, you know, first year it started out with. Uh, Oh, nice. Uh, first year, it started out with um, with us just going and, you know, the the promoters at L.A. Comic Con really like podcasts. So they were just like, oh, yeah, you guys are a podcast. Yeah. No, you know, just submit and we'll, we'll get you there. And, uh-huh. you know, we made sure that we took pictures and everything like that. Year two, um, we that that last year when we, we linked up with um, Comic Con Radio uh and we were supposed to go down there and hook up with them but they ended up having to pull out of the con well we didn't have a booth we didn't have anywhere to go so they you know the 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 guy who runs um comic-con radio ends up linking us with the pr team over at uh la comic-con they put us in the press booth uh and they hooked us up with a bunch of interviews and stuff so i mean like that was fun yeah and then this year uh, same thing, you know, they all recognize this. They're all like, oh, yeah, no, we are uh, the uh, distance nerding. We love you guys, you know, and mm-hmm. um, and, you know, that that relationship <laughs> is like growing. Like the more we grow, L.A. Comic Con really like pushes us a lot. So uh, it, it, it helps us out a lot that we have so much support from from that community as well. Would you say that's one of the bigger events you do every year? Yeah, that is the that's the biggest event we do every year. That one in Gem State Comic Con. Right, right. And are they the same or are they different types of monsters when you look at, I mean, is doing, is doing podcasting for one con, like when you've done one, you've done them all, or do they all kind of have their own little variety or taste to them? They, they do all have their own little variety just because the different communities are going to react differently. I mean, we do see uh, similar people at different cons and stuff like that. We do see a lot of cosplayers that, you know, we'll see in Oregon at different shows out there versus like, you know, uh, a lot of our Southern California or like mid Valley, uh, California cosplayers. We'll see, uh, at LA comic con every year, like Cindy Rue cosplay, uh, H2 Hummin, you know, um, of course the Fresno Deadpools, we're all good friends with them. So like, right. you know, uh, a, a lot of them uh, we'll see at these cons and we'll go and hang out with them. And it's, it's, it's pretty cool. Nice. Nice. And this, when you're going to weekends like this, do you, do you kind of have a game plan or do you have to be just as flexible as possible? Uh it's kind of both, man. Like we'll have an idea of what it is that we want to, to do. Um, say Wong, personally, I don't know D pity. Uh, I would <laughs> love to meet D pity. Uh, I'm sure g- g- there's been a couple times where somebody's mistaken me for D pity. So, uh, you know, that's, that's always fun <laughs> when that happens. Uh, I, I get the mistakes for D pity. I've also been mistaken for, uh, been mistaken for a couple Deadpool cosplayers. It's, it's usually, uh-huh. fun. um, but no, um, uh, what was, what was I saying? <laughs> Um, I totally, I totally lost track once the, the deep pity came up. Um, we were talking about the difference between cons. Like, are are is is doing a podcast for one con the same yeah. as each, or are they a little bit different? Or yeah, so the communities are always different. Any anywhere you go, you're gonna get a different community in I in Idaho versus um versus Oregon versus LA and everything like that. We do different prep for different shows. Mm-hmm. Uh now we do a lot of Colossus Girl shows. So with the Colossus Girl shows, we handle all the panels for all of their Comic Cons. So all the celebrity interviews and all of the the different shows and hosting and all that, we we handle all of that stuff for anything that Colossus Girl puts on. Uh, for something like LA Comic Con, uh, again, we go as press, so it's more we're seeking out what celebrities we can meet and, and try and like uh, get interviews with or uh, what guests that we can find and stuff. Like, uh, we, 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 LA Comic Con is usually like our big show of the year that gives us like a big push for right. all of the guests that we're gonna have for the rest of the year, so you know, uh we uh we link up with a lot of like independent comic book creators uh both artists and writers uh we link up with a lot of cosplayers but then we try to link up with like different types of celebrities and different things that are that are uh on there at the con you know right and for you guys then I, what i think is very interesting because i was thinking about i was thinking about you guys in terms of 
Um, you know, you hear a lot of, of now of, of days about people getting superhero fatigue. Um, and, uh-oh. Okay. One second, one second. Hello, can you hear me? Am I can I hear you. I've, no, I've, I've, you've been right. here the whole time for me, man. Oh, okay. My, my, <laughs> okay, sorry, it went out. Um, <laughs> superhero fatigue. And we on, on um, KCP, we have Saturday morning nerd out. Mm -hmm. um you guys you know you guys talk about you know all the theories and the the movies that are coming out especially superhero type stuff yeah. do you think if if superhero fatigue is true you guys could still go on right because i mean your nerding is i mean you could be wrestling you could be comic books yeah. you could be manga you could be i mean anything right yeah yeah i mean we we do not have a uh you know, there, there, there is not a a short of content for us to talk about just because there's so much that's out there. Uh, I mean, we talk about general pop culture, but then we also talk about wrestling. We also talk about anime, animation in general. Uh, just, just everything that's out. Cartoons, man. Like, I mean, just there's nothing out there that we don't talk about. I mean, video games. I've got Mario sitting right next to me right here. You know, <laughs> um, you know, just uh, Lego. I mean, come on. I built. I have a whole show. And this was the pitch when we were at LA Comic Con talking to everybody. Is I have a whole show where I build Lego while I do an interview, and the, and people right. love the concept of that. You know. <laughs> um, Can I add? I appreciate you using the correct plural for Lego. Of Lego, yes. <laughs> it's wow. true. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the the plural for Lego is Lego. <laughs> I learned about um, it today. Yes, there is no such thing as Legos. Legos. <laughs> uh, that would be a plural of a plural. <laughs> so say Lego so, bricks. Uh, Lego bricks would be that. Yeah. When you're when you're going out, like, do you in particular, or is it like maybe I, you know, I'm, I'm just using an example. Maybe you tend to be uh, focused really on the comic book people and the artists, and maybe James is looking for musicians and actors, or do you guys just kind of go and talk to whoever you can find? No, we just talk to whoever we can find. Um, you know, it's funny is, is my wife, Jackie was, it was uh, just talking about how there were certain people that she wasn't sure if I'd be interested in talking to them. And I was like, well, no, I'm interested in talking to creatives. I don't care. Right what you do i want to talk about the creative process um you know we we had a conversation with a i don't want to give it away so we were we were talking with a guest that or a, a potential guest in the future uh and he was afraid that you know we were we would bring up uh current and future projects and he's like i can't can't talk about that and i was telling him i, I don't want to talk about your current and future projects you might have somebody in the chat that might ask about it but you know right all you if, if you come on the show all you have to say is i i don't want to talk about that which is fine because that's not what i want to talk about i want to talk about your creative process i want to talk about how you got into what you're doing i want to talk about your origin story and how you became who you are you know right. um this particular person is an artist uh so you know like where did you get the bug for art when did you start becoming an artist um both james and i have a passion for I would say we're amateur journalists because none of us have former tra training in, in journalism or anything like that. But we we tend to do a crap ton of research on every person that we interview, whether it's somebody that's small or somebody that's giant. Right. Um, and, and most of the people that we interview, they appreciate that because, you know, they they feel like, oh, yeah, these guys really do enjoy what I do. Um we we, we had another uh, guest that we had interviewed uh, at a con that said uh, that they what they liked about us the most was both James and I, we don't seem like we're phoning things in. We're not like, oh, yeah, you were in this cartoon, so tell us about that. Like, we know the properties that they're in, and we get excited right. about those properties, and we're sitting there saying, like, oh, dude, you were in this, so tell us what the experience of, of this was, or, you know, tell us what it was like doing X, Y, and Z, and things like that. And he was saying, like, he enjoys the passion that we have, Right, because it's not just somebody who's reporting on something; it's somebody who enjoys that stuff 
that also gets to report on it. And that's kind of the way that we see it too, is, wow. you know, we, we, we're, we're nerds that get to report on nerdy things. You know, um, if, if you missed, if you're new to us, if you guys don't know who distance nerding is, uh, we just recently, uh, our latest episode, I did my first piece of original journalism, uh, and it, um, it felt nice. It felt really good. We, <laughs> we reported on, uh, so, so we got invited to uh, a Nasil press conference in the, for Nasil company. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're unfamiliar with Nasil company, if you've seen uh, the toys that made us, the movies that made us, the, the yeah, those yeah. shows on Netflix, if you've watched Behind the Attraction on, on Disney Plus, uh, Nasil company is behind all that stuff, right? Uh, oh, wow. Also, yeah. Also, they're the ones that are bringing back all the retro cartoons right now, like uh, um, Robo Force and, uh, uh, and Biker Mice from Mars, things like that. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that are bringing all that back and bringing all the toys back and everything like that. Um, so we we got invited to uh, to to go to their press conference for a uh, the announcement of the Nasilverse. Uh, which is a new universe of cartoons that they're putting together. A uh, right. bunch of old cartoons between the 50s and the in the 90s that kind of didn't get their just due, but they're putting them inside of like one cohesive universe. So right. excuse me. Um, and that was that was awesome. So I mean, I actually like took notes and wrote everything down and mm -hmm. wrote a piece on it. And I was like, we're gonna report on this, you know, just because I wanted to do an original piece. And funny enough, James just did an, another original piece that he just submitted to Spoiler Magazine. So like, we're 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 jumping into like the journalism arena more so, just because we're finding that we have a passion for this kind of thing without even doing like the whole scoop spoilers and all that like we're just kind of like you know we'll, we'll report on stuff like that and we'll speculate on things like that but we just enjoy having conversations about nerdy things with like-minded people so does that mean okay okay so let's say la con let's say la con is coming up next week yeah does that mean that the week ahead of time you and james are looking through the the guests that are coming and just oh, doing yeah basic research on everybody just in case you run into them so kind of um or do you uh, like target certain people and go okay we're really going to try to shoot for the red ranger or whoever yeah it is. so we we do kind of target for certain people uh what we did last year uh because we got some pretty major interviews last year um we we're pretty good about if it's if it's a property we already know about we'll go off of what we know right uh, so at the last minute, they scheduled in a, uh, an interview with us with uh, for us with um, the the cast of the Sandlot, right? And uh -huh. that was that was really cool. But you know, for us, it was like, oh, we know all about the Sandlot. Let's like actually look up. You know, we'll, we'll just like do a quick quick like Google, uh, Google research. It's like, okay, what's what's some things that we can bring up or all this? Oh, look, they have a foundation that we can talk about. They have this thing. Oh, this is really right. cool. You know, things like that. Um, and then Rob Paulson, uh, we got um, we talked to Rob Paulson. We stayed up until two in the morning that night writing an interview to make sure that we had material for the next day. He's the creator of Deadpool, right? No, no. Rob Paulson is the voice of Yakko Warner and Pinky from oh, Pinky and the Brain. Sorry, he's sorry. the original. Yeah, he's the original Raphael from Ninja Turtles. He's, you know, he, this dude has voiced. He's voiced a character in every cartoon you have ever watched if you grew up in the <laughs> 80s and the 90s watching cartoons. Right. Wow, that is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Do you do you particularly have a genre that just makes you giddy? Like, God. Are, you, are you a comic book or movies or music or? It's hard to pinpoint anything with me because I get so excited about everything. Uh, <laughs> you know, like, like yeah, oh, he's yeah. like Jim Cummings of cable voices. Um, <laughs> it, there's, there's, um, it gets really hard to say, is there one thing that I nerd out on a lot? Because I nerd out about everything, right? So, like, <laughs> I, I know deep cut <laughs> Star Wars. I know all about the comics when it comes to DC and Marvel. I even know some image stuff. You know, um, I, I I tend to be the knowledge guy on, uh, on the show where it's like, oh, yeah, hey, um, you know, uh, uh, Miss Marvel is coming out. Tell us why you should like Miss Marvel, and I, I'll go nerd out about Miss Marvel. You know stuff like that. 
he did do John Lennon in <laughs> anime. He played he played a lot of characters on Animaniacs. He's he's he played Doctor Scratch and Sniff. He played um, he played Yakko Warner. I mean, he, he's he, the the guy's so versatile; it's ridiculous. Jim Cummings does my favorite Star Wars character in all of Star Wars. He does Hondo Anaka. Oh, Hondo Anaka! Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hondo's a great character. I can't wait to see him live action, man. It'll it, it'll be great when because we we've seen his race at this point in the in in the Mandalorian. So it's like right. I want to see him actually let like somebody interact with Hondo Onaka. That would be that would be pretty dope. That would be dope. And so let me let me ask you, how do you feel like I'm I'm sure you know every every artist they say, you know, if you can't look back at yourself two years ago and think that you were terrible, then you're not progressing. Are God. you able to look back at where because I mean at this point distance nerding has been what four five years? No, no, we're three years this year. Three years this year. Okay, okay. Are you, are you, do you ever look back at where you guys started and just go, man, like we've come a long way every day, man. Uh, you can go back and listen to our first episode and literally the episode is called, uh, we, you got to start somewhere. Right. And then okay. the idea is because it was just me and James and a, and a blue Yeti microphone talking at a table and it sounds absolutely horrible. Uh, and we, 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 we really didn't, you know, start getting our flow until like episode six. Uh, and now we're 153 episodes in, you know? So, I mean, like, right. you know, we, we've been doing this for a while, um, as far as, you know, look back and acknowledge you're horrible. I mean, we, we, we still don't think we're good, you know, like we're, 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 we're those guys that we get compliments from people that we interview or we get compliments from uh, um, fans and guests and stuff like that. And we're just like, you know, humbled by it every time because we really don't think we're that good. You know, uh, we, 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 we feel like the things that we do are basic things that you would, uh, uh, you would expect anyone to do. And uh, apparently it seems like it, like most people don't, but I mean, like, you know, right. that's, that's, that's I mean, the thing with us. Is, yeah. You know, A I mean, that's the thing. The thing with us is we we don't believe that we we never believe that we're like you know the best or we're really good at what we do like we 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 think we're good enough you know to do what we do but at the right. same time like you know I think it's it's a humbling thing for us to like sit there and ground ourselves and say that you know we are a um we're an, we're, we're decent enough and we're entertaining enough to continue doing this when you guys first started, did you envision like the stuff that you're doing now? Or was it, did you have a different, different vision in your head of what it was that you guys were doing? Um, and then, you know, how, how did you, how did that spur to where you guys are now? Cause like I said, when I, when I talk, when I talk to a lot of people or I hear about a podcast, I think of something, you know, I think of two guys in a booth or two guys in a room together and you're not really, you're, you're talking about things external, but you're not going out. You guys actually go out and do interviews. You guys take road yeah. trips. You're, you're going to different conventions. You're not only just interviewing people, but you're, you know, you're very close with the people that run the conventions as well. Right. Right. Is this we, what you set out to do when you first started or. <laughs> and it's a combination, man. I mean, like some of the things that we do, were were things on the road plan like you know eventually we want to do this there are some things that we still haven't done and we're still not where we want to be but i mean like you know it, it's it's we're we're constantly trying to grow and trying to push ourselves forward and trying to innovate and make ourselves better you know in every way that we can um when we first started it was just two guys who had just left another podcast that we're like, okay, well, we're not doing what we think we should be doing at that show. So why don't we do what we think we should be doing and make our own show, you know, and that's where the birth of distance learning came from. And, uh, you know, it, it, it started off with just me and James, just, you know, just two guys that wanted to talk about nerdy stuff. Uh, and then, you know, it evolved into different things that were, you know, we started bringing more people into the fold and trying to get right. as many people around us that 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 wanted to participate with it. the The con thing was because 
really we just wanted to we we wanted to be those guys on stage doing the interview right how fun would that be if we did that uh right. and that wasn't something that happened right away it took a while to get to that but once we started <clears throat> getting that once we got that going um you know there was always good feedback and it's always you know it's always been like you know it, the feedback has always been good for us and and it it helps us out cuz it also you know, we, we take feedback really seriously whenever we hear anybody give us any feedback, which is very rare and we want more of it. But, you know, when we do get feedback, we, we make every change that we can to make ourselves better. Right. Right. What's one thing that um, that you would like to do that you just haven't been able to do yet? Oh, God, I. One day I would want I I just want this to this whole thing to be in like an actual studio. Yeah. Right. Like I'd want like an actual st- what what I want my vision where I like like you know five years from now, right? We're uh you know this giant organization that's followed by everybody kind of thing. Uh I would want a almost like comicbook.com or new rock stars or like you know we're in a studio almost like on a studio set but yeah. we can still interact with our chat you know like i want to be as interact i want to continue to be as interactive as possible right you know? right, right. Like that's that's the biggest thing is i i always want our community to, community to be involved with us um uh, almost to an extent where you know the community is a part of the show you know what i mean right no i, I I'm, I'm loving it do you have um you guys have a lot planned for this year? Um I know you do a lot with Powerhouse and they they tour to like Idaho, Oregon, uh Nevada. Do you have a, a lot on your schedule already or are you you pack it up the schedule? What's up, Frey? Yeah, we 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 have a lot going on. So um, you know, kick off the season, it's always Idaho. Uh so we got a two day show in Idaho. We have three shows in Oregon, we have a show in Reno. Um, there's supposed to be two shows here in California. And then of course, LA comic-con, uh, we are doing uh, a couple of new shows this year. We're doing a show called kaboom com kaboom con in, uh, um, in, Nevada. in Nevada. I think you guys yes. are going to be there, right? Jimmy Jones. Yeah. That's, that's yeah, the yeah, yeah. decision. Yeah. 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 So we're going to be doing kaboom con, uh, and actually we, uh, we just got with, um, Another friend of the show, uh, Kaboom Khan, was asking us if we wanted to do a panel. Uh, mm-hmm. And I think we're going to – I think the plan now is we're going to do uh, – we're, we're, we're going to do something with another organization. I don't want to give, again, uh, uh, a lot away with that. But uh, there's there's some stuff down the pipeline that they want to they, they want us to help, like, kind of announce. So, um, you know, like like mainstream media kind of stuff. You know what I mean? So – uh and they want to kind of like do an announcement at at, at kaboom com because we're kaboom con because we're both going to be there so um that might be something fun uh Ooh. and you know like again it's it's things like that you know um yeah you know, i've always been like a, an aspiring voice actor so i mean like i've i i i'd love to get deeper into that you know what i mean right that be that would be fantastic yes we will be at kaboom con as well um right. so i am excited about that one um we are getting ready to wow man 40 minutes goes fast um we're getting ready to finish up here is there anything you want to leave with people or um uh you know direct people to stuff we're gonna have all of your information in the uh description box down below so if people want to find um find out how they can listen to distant nerding all that information is going to be down below in the description box or or mez is putting it up right now <laughs> actually i'm going to give you guys one it's in more both, here. honey <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna give you guys one more here. Hold on, link. If you guys are interested, right here, that link I just put in right there will give you everything that we have. Ooh, so your link tree. Yeah, anything that anything that distance nerding does, it's all there. Um, and uh, as, as far as Arctic Solace, stop it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. You got it. Uh, I, I was I was I was gonna say um you know our our motto on the show is keep nerding together right so I mean that's that's really my my driving message is 
you know, keep nerding together, keep enjoying the things that you love, uh, and and never, never allow anybody to tell you that you are wrong or weird or mm. or not right because you enjoy something. Enjoy what you enjoy, uh, unless it's something that is like harmful. You know what I mean? Like that's right. It's a different monster thing right there. But I mean, like, you know, enjoy what you enjoy. As far as uh, my, my little sign outs, uh, you know, if you if you watch the show, you're familiar with what I'm about to say. If you're not if you're not uh, if you haven't watched our show, if you haven't listened to our show, then this is going to be your first time hearing this. But guys, connect with us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, <laughs> TikTok, Threads, YouTube, Discord, MySpace, Vine, GeoCities, Friendster, Second Life, AIM, Farmers Only, Christian Mingle. Only fans. It's only pictures <laughs> of Aaron right, Watson's feet. Before <laughs> Aaron you Watson's go, feet. I have one question to ask you. <laughs> yeah, man. How the hell did you meet Kevin Smith? Oh man! All right. <laughs> God, do uh, we don't have enough time for this? Uh, so, <laughs> so Sunday morning, I got an email again because we're part of the press on uh, um, at LA Comic Con. Uh, we get uh press releases and we'll get like invites from different uh promoters right and i get this email uh like early sunday morning that says hey we really want you to come to this um this press event uh it's a panel on cancer survivors and how comic books uh and 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 uh pop culture uh, help them survive their ordeals, right? It's actually a really powerful message. Uh, they were also leading into uh, National Cancer Awareness Week, um, you know, so just like how to check for cancer and things like that. But uh, one of the breast, one of the cancer survivors was a um, was a breast cancer survivor. The other, uh, can- he was a stomach cancer survivor. Um, and uh, and then of course the other panelist was a, was a doctor. But then uh, the last thing on there. And special guest host, Kevin Smith. Wow. And so I was like, if Kevin Smith is there, I'm I'm there. Right. You know, we we went and for a second I almost forgot Kevin was there because just the again, the 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 message and the guests that were there were so powerful that it was just, you know, it, it was breathtaking, it was beautiful, it was awesome the breast cancer survivor wrote and drew a comic book while she was on chemo um the stomach uh, cancer survivor basically said that the mcu got him through uh wow. everything that he was going through like basically he was just like if if i can just get to end game then everything will be okay you know and stuff like that like and and kevin smith you know if, for for those of you who are kevin smith fans that don't know you know he had a, a widow maker heart attack and he kind of uh, uh, lived on that same creed that, you know, as long as I can get to end game, you know, everything will be okay. I'll be all right. You know, right. Um, it's kind of like his vegan journey, everything that changed in his life. So at the end of the, at the end of the presentation, I go and go stand in the back. Of course, Kevin Smith is getting swamped. Like he does, <sighs> like he does. Right. Like he does. Uh, right. And as he's walking out, uh, I, I go to go shake my hand. Uh, I'll go to go shake his hand. And I go, Kev, I, I just wanted to tell you that you are a massive inspiration to me. You are a big deal when it comes to, you know, I'm a podcaster. I, I have a podcast. Uh, we do interviews and the, my interview kind of style and everything that we do, it, it, you take so much care into your interviews and to the way that you do things. And, and it really inspires me and makes me want to do what I do. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's, you just see him like he goes, <laughs> you know, and he, he, you see just like the, the look of just that's beautiful all come on his face and you kind of almost see, Kevin Smith is known for crying really easily. So you can see that right. he's already starting to like, you know, like, you have no idea how much that means to me. Like he said, that's what he said. Right. He goes, you, you don't right. know how much that means to me. And I told him, look, man, there are three bucket list interviews that I have. Uh, you know, it's it's these three and, and I will consider myself completely fulfilled as far as interviews go. And I told him. Rob Paulson, uh, Mark Hamill, and you. Last yeah, year, yeah. last year I had a chance to interview Rob Paulson. He goes, I'm going to stop you right there. He goes, uh, you will get me on your show before you get Mark. I'm just going to say that. Wow. Right? And and, and I told him, I mean, I mean, speaking of that, you know, what's – what what would I have to do to get you on the show? How 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 can I get you on the show? And he goes, well, 
he goes, you got a business card? And I'm like, hell yeah, I got a business card. <laughs> Gave him my card. Uh, and he goes, yeah, no, well, I'll get in touch, man. And, uh, and, uh, and so I'm, I'm already kind of in shock. So I, I walk out of the room and he gets swamped by more people because the, the press room was next door. So I had to grab all my gear. Right. Um, and we're walking back out and he still hasn't left. And the security's trying to tell him he needs to go. And people are still mm-hmm. trying to like, uh, talk to him. And so I'm like, oh, I hate this. And I was like, all right, dude, look, Kev, I know you got to go, man. Um, do you mind if I get a selfie? And he was like, absolutely, man. So <laughs> took a couple of selfies, shook his hand, right. gave him some stickers. And he was like, oh, fuck yeah, I love stickers, man. Stickers go everywhere <laughs> for me. Right. And uh, and uh, I'm sorry, I just cussed on the show. But I mean, that's, that's <laughs> uh, I, I was just excited about it, right? Uh, and, right. And, and I'm I'm never, I don't get starstruck. I meet so many people. Uh, and I don't get starstruck when I meet celebrities. I was I was shaking when I met Kevin Smith because he means sure so much be. to me. Right. You know, like he means a lot to me, man. Um, and 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 I reiterated, you know, man, seriously, you know, we would love to have you on the show, man. You just come on the show. I build Lego. We just talk shit for two hours. <laughs> he was like, that sounds like a blast. I want to do that. <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> you well, know, I so, wish you the best. I will uh, definitely be tuning in if you if you have Kevin Smith on. That is, yeah, that I is hope absolutely the world amazing. <laughs> well, Phil, I am um, I'm I am very proud to call you uh, my friend. I've seen you and James grow a lot in. Well, I mean, I've known you guys longer than the three years, but I mean, even just yeah. the three years that you've been focusing on this, you guys have grown so much. I'm right. so excited. I've told you there's been a few times I've gone out and people are like, oh, are you distance nerding? We're like, no, dude, we're <laughs> we're our own separate organization. <laughs> we're not as cool as those guys, all right? <laughs> uh, you, guys are, you, guys, you guys have more followers than us, so you guys are just the, – the, the internet says you guys are cooler than us, all right? Well, I pay well. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I want to thank you for being on with us. I know you have a busy schedule. You are working so hard on your own shows and so many things that you have up and coming. So I appreciate your time uh, your time being with us. I thank you, man. I thank you so much. Make sure to uh, check out Distance Nerding wherever you get your podcasts and start uh, start listening to them. All right, my friend. Mezzo, give us that outro. I think I took that picture too. That was at (laughs) KyberCon. Yes. Um, Every picture Phil's got this. I I can just imagine with like a beer, a beer mug in his hand every time he's doing that. Yeah. And and Phil, I gotta tell you, every time I see you and James travel, I just get so jealous. That's I almost said a bad word. (laughs) Um, I I get because I just want to go out and do stuff like that. I I stay home a lot when it comes to just things in general. So I don't try. I don't. And I can't say I don't travel a whole lot. I technically took five trips this year, but none of it was for nerd stuff. It was all like it was all family stuff. stuff like that. See, that's what I want us to, to start doing, mess because we have had invitations from like Lightspeed. Um, Lightspeed wanted us to come out and do like to narrate their their fights and stuff like that, which I think would have been so much fun. Like I, I would have no idea what I'm doing if I did something. That like guy that. poked the other guy. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, good control there with that swing and stuff like that. <laughs> make it, I make it. <laughs> I um, think it would be fun, and uh, there's lots of other events. Like I would love to start having a KCP booths um, as opposed to just uh, Kyber K booths when we go to like these a KC, events. KCP mix in a sense. Yeah, um, you know, just to promote, because usually when I'm out there and, you know, I'm trying to sell sabers, I only have like a quick second to say, hey, by the way, make sure to check out, um, subscribe to, to Kyber Cave Productions. You can win, you know, we give away a free saber every 100 so subscribers. Is that, is that you telling me that, Metso, you need to come so that you can KCP chat people? See you and Anthony and Aubrey, all of y'all can come out. If everybody else is closer, I drag them into. Yeah, I know. I I would I would do. Um, well, let me know what the next event is. I don't. I can't guarantee you, but just because when you guys do cons, my brain can't keep up with the chat that we share with his store manager. 
Mm-hmm. And so if there's like a con coming up, hey, Mezzo, there's this. Can you come and I'll see what I can do? Um, yeah, I would love to get Greyhaired out here. Yes. I, 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 like when Forrest got to come out here, that is the first online friend that I've worked with, where it'd be like a channel or whatever, or stream with from far away that I've actually got to meet in person, which was pretty, am- well, I can't say that a hundred percent, but, uh, but that I worked with on a channel with for sure. Yes. is the first time I've been able to meet someone. I did do right. a, um, a, for those of you who maybe not remember this, but there was this streaming app Twitter owned called Periscope for a while. <laughs> yes. And I had about 1100 followers on there. I would sing opera and sometimes I would suck helium to do it. Um, <laughs> And I went to a convention for it in San Francisco, and I did get to meet a few of the people that I made friends with on there. Um, so that that was fun. But it nice. none of that was like they weren't like family, like Force and everybody here in KCP. So right. yeah, I miss Vine too. Distance learning, like TikTok, just felt like a reinvention of Vine, and then added longer videos. Um, <laughs> so that's exactly like just how it felt. Um, all right, so. Now that we have finished our bad arse interview with young Phil, because he's bad arse, that's why I added that. Arr. Um, arr. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we have our next segment, which Kevin Hogan. Guys, Kevin Hogan is our Comic Con Adventures reporter, and he goes to conventions every week and sends us conventions. And just as an announcement to let you know, next week is his last week with us for a while. Ooh. He's taking a break. I know, and we're going to be finding a segment to fill until he is uh, until he would like to return. Um, and we'll, we'll just be something fun. It might be actually interactive with you guys. Who knows? Um, that's what we're kind of just going to fill it with something fun until he's uh, ready to come back. Um, yes, so- Kevin, we love you so much. We love yes, your segment. Do. Um, I, I think it's really cool. Um, I'm very proud of having a show where we can let people know about up and coming events. It's not just showing stuff that's going on, but it's also letting people know where they can go so that they can be a part of this bigger community. So Kevin, I want to thank you for all the hard work that you've done on our show. Um, hopefully you will definitely be coming back. You are always welcome. And we hope you, you will. We're hoping this is just a little tiny break and you'll be back on the scene, but um, yeah, we, we love you, Kev. You do all great right. work, buddy. We do, Kevin. So everyone, please enjoy this Comic-Con segment. Hello, this is Kevin Hogan from Northern California with an episode of California Comic-Con Adventures. On the weekend of December the 1st through the 3rd, 2023, was the Los Angeles Comic-Con over at the Los Angeles Convention Center. LA Comic-Con is one of the very large Southern California Comic-Cons you may have heard of there. Uh, These events can be so large, they can have over 100,000 fans over the whole weekend there, uh, with maybe Maybe over 250 different panel discussions going on there, uh, sometimes with over 800 different various uh, artists and exhibitions going on there. Uh, so definitely want to plan out your weekend if you're planning to go into the Los Angeles Comic Con there. There's so much to see and do down there, and definitely lots of cool cosplay going on as well down there. Very cool to check out. Also in the weekend of Saturday, December the 2nd, 2023, was the Vallejo Mad Hatter's Day Parade. Uh, This is an annual parade in downtown Vallejo area where you get to see lots of different artist groups all come together to show off what they've been working on. Where it's very interesting, you get to see lots of steampunk themed vehicles, kind of like out of the movies Mad Max, uh, where they're all like uh, metal animal shaped vehicles. Uh, where they're like uh, not really sure how they're moving exactly, but they're like shooting fireballs. Uh, some of them have lights all over them there. Some of them are shaped like little houses or animals and stuff like that. Uh, you also have the East Bay Krampus group that are like shaped like uh, animal demons and stuff from different uh, cultures and folklore. Uh, walking around there looking for naughty children and stuff uh, with Santa Claus nearby. Uh, you also have the Star Wars groups like the 501st and others that are waving at people handing out candy which is nice and you have many other groups from around Slano County of waving at people saying hello so it's really interesting that they put this on every year again to see all the different artist groups come together to put on such a fun thing 
On that same weekend of December the 2nd, 2023, our friends over at Ohana Comic Con visited Central California city of Modesto. And then the next day on December the 3rd, they went to Northern California city of Concord. Ohana Comic Con, as you know, travels up and down the state of California every weekend, visiting a different city, hosting fun Comic Con events. Their admissions very economical, usually less than $10 per person, and kids 10 and under are free. If you stick around to the afternoon, usually around 2.30 is when they have their fun cosplay contest where you get to hang out with some friends and see some interesting costumes they made there and win some fun prizes. So whenever Ohana Comic Con comes to a town near you, definitely recommend checking it out. And for everyone looking forward to upcoming events, every weekend now through the middle of December from 10 a.m. to 6 in the Cow Palace in San Mateo is the Great Dickens Christmas Fair and Holiday Party. And also on the weekend of Saturday, December the 16th, 2023, from noon to 6, is the Cosplay in the Park Cosplay Gathering at the Christmas Festival in Cesar Chavez Plaza in San Jose, right across from the Convention Center. And also on the weekend of December the 17th, from 11 to 4 in Woodland, Ohana Comic Con is having another one of their fun Comic Con events. Well, thanks for watching, hope you enjoy the pics, and we'll see you out there at the next Comic Con. All right, thank you, Kevin Hogan, for your Woo! report, sir. Always very much enjoy that. Thank, um, thank you. Yeah, I yeah, that Mad Hatter event they do that in Vallejo every year is absolutely amazing. That's cool. Have you no, ever I'm been? Like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I said, "Don't travel, don't do nerdy." I don't like travel for nerdy things very much. I'd love to do that more. Like I, I love being at home with my family. Sometimes I think about how it'd be cool to travel a, a couple places, like for work. Right. It would be really cool to do that kind of thing. Um, who knows? Maybe one day. Um, well, anyway, we will blow this channel up, and that's what we will do. We will build it up. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, thank you, Kevin Hogan, for your report. I look forward to next week's. Um, it will make me. It, it, there's that bitter. So sad. Like, I, I'm sad that you're. But but when we sometimes we need breaks, we need breaks, and take them when you need them. So, and we encourage them. Yes. And so anyway, also, I want to remind everybody in the chat, as you see in the ticker at the bottom, we have a Patreon. You can go to patreon.com slash Productions to help support the channel here um, and the time that we spend on it. Uh, if you're if you're curious, I spend um, probably about 15 to 20 hours a week working on things for the channel. Wow. Um, and wow. editing, find, trying to emailing people, posting stuff like that. Just uh, uh, editing. Editing's more than just like cut and paste and then move that here. It's gathering assets and, and such. And, right. Uh, it it's takes a lot time of work to edit and stuff. And so, uh, but that's just to give you like a little taste of one person's job. And uh, we got graveyard edits. We got uh, Ark here finds guests. Uh, Aubrey's finding a ton of videos for Hearts of Kyber. Uh, that's been going on on Tuesdays. It's just, there's, and she's also like at the New Order. We actually recorded our first episode of a new show called New Order. It wow. Is uh, we recorded it last Friday. And, I'm um, excited. And so here we'll be editing the first uh, episode uh, along. And we have a, also another new show. So both of these are up. Right. So we have two new shows, guys. Two new shows. New Order, which is a, uh, a cool like role-playing game that Aubrey and a friend mel i think is her name created um that some of us are playing and so like i even have special dice that i'm using for it you guys will think these dice are really really cool um they're metal Ooh. uh let's see if the camera will focus and the lines like that means five because there's mm -hmm. five lines touching oh uh, okay it has they have their own little box i have two of them um, and so they got that show coming. Very excited. There's going to be a lot of creative things with that show. Um, it had a lot of pre-production stuff is what happened. And that's why this one took a little while. And then a new show with this dude right here who three times forgot it wasn't live. He <laughs> started talking to the audience. Um, I have edited the first episode of that show and that will be going up tomorrow. Oh, uh, wow. For everyone to see. Yes, I finished it finally. Uh, I have the second episode to still do. Let me give you an example, guys. Okay. Art and work. Anthony do the show. It's called Unpopular Opinion, and it's a lot of topical discussion. They're watching clips of a discussion, and they're talking about their views 
and things that you know advice of like what could be better and such um they recorded two hours and 25 minutes of footage <laughs> i blame anthony for that and, and anthony has so many amazing things to say <laughs> a ton of research but i can't include it all so it has been edited down to an hour and 15 minutes all right um, wow that so sure i did the best i work. could <laughs> <laughs> um so you guys look for those this week um Ooh. and enjoy uh i'm not sure exactly if new order will be ready this week i'm hoping i'm trying to get in by the end of the week so it comes out on friday i'm excited to see that um, me um, me too <laughs> And I'm sure Aubrey is as well. Um, all right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us this week. We'll be back next week. But then we have a two-week break. Yes, the, yes. Uh, Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve falls on a Sunday this year. So we will not be doing shows that day. So after but the we 17th, will be back right after that, though. Don't, don't ever worry. We yes, always come back. And we always we do have our weekly shows and things that do come up that we still have come out. <laughs> And stream, so what? Unlike your, unlike your dad that went out for milk, we always come back. Yeah. Oh my gosh, man. That was so horrible. So why'd you say it? I don't know what possessed me. Goodness. We um, will be back, y'all. Saber Rattle, everybody. Okay, so thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Peace.